everyone and welcome back to Nine Nails Garage. Today we're going to do a little how-to video in comparison between conventional automotive painting and uh, just regular spray paint. So we're going to be painting a few parts on the truck. We are going to be painting the front bumper, the grill, and the rear bumper on the truck. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what we're dealing with. We've got um, paint is flaking right here and it's flaking in the corners down here. I had these painted at a uh, actually a professional paint shop did them in California before we moved here to Tennessee and uh, as you can see it's all kind of flaking off we've got a few rock chips so I just want to make sure we repaint it we get it done right and uh, hopefully it holds up a little bit better and uh, the grill same deal paint flaking off there and we just want to get that touched up and looking good as new so this is Chrysler PS2 Silver um, I will be painting the front bumper and the grill with the conventional automotive paint system. We've got our medium base reducer, our PS2 silver, our paint gun, and our clear coat and 2K activator. So that's what we're going to be doing on the front of the truck. And then on the back, we are going to be doing the uh, Dupacolor PS2 silver with 2K clear coat. And you can buy this stuff on Amazon. I'll leave the uh, part number and where you can find this in the description down below. But this is great clear coat, it works well, and we're going to be touching up this back bumper here with that. So we got a scrape in the back bumper, so we're going to have to sand that down and uh, we'll get that touched up and repainted with the PS2 Silver Dupa Color Spray Paint. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the truck around to the back garage, we'll get the bumpers and the grill off the truck and uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do to get them prepped for paint. So we do have to move the Viper out of the back garage to make room for the bumpers, and uh, hadn't been starting in a while, so I figured I'd share a cold start. So now that we got everything off the truck and in our garage, we're gonna go ahead and start off by just kind of washing all the bug guts and any kind of extra trash or dirt that's on everything. We just got a bucket of soapy water with a regular sponge and uh, we're gonna get everything we can off of there and kind of on the back side so when we're spraying it, we don't get dust flying up in our paint job. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So now that we got all the dirt and bug guts off of uh, all of our pieces here, we're going to go ahead and wet sand down our problem areas is what we're going to start with with some 400 grit sandpaper, wet dry, and uh, we'll start with our problem areas and then we'll go through and we'll sand everything with some 400 grit sandpaper. We want to make sure we get every bit of shiny out of this and we just want everything to have that nice dull finish because the better everything's scuffed up and sanded down, the better the paint is going to stick. So this is probably one of the most important steps in painting anything just because you want to make sure you get everything scuffed up really good and you get a really good base for that paint to stick to.
So we got every bit of the bumpers and grill all sanded down, 400 grit. I used the DA a little bit on some of the bigger areas and everything came out pretty good. Everything, everything smoothed out, all the little, uh, the little nicks smoothed out and came out very good. So now we're gonna go ahead and throw some wax and grease remover on it. I'll leave the, uh, where you can get this on Amazon, I'll leave the link in the description down below so you can find that if you need it. And uh, after we wax and grease remove, we'll throw a little primer on our bare areas here. It's always a good idea to put primer on uh, any bare plastic or bare metal. It's just gonna allow the paint to stick a lot better because primer will stick better to the plastic than the paint does and the paint will stick better to the primer. So after we put the primer on, we'll wet sand it and then we'll put our paint on. So now we're gonna go ahead, do this. We'll blow it off with compressed air and um, then we'll throw our primer on. The primer I'll be using is Transtar 2-in-1 Sandable Filler Primer. And uh, I believe you can get this on Amazon. Most uh, auto parts stores that sell paint supplies will have this as well. It's a little more expensive than Rust-Oleum, but it dries quicker, it's easier to work with, and uh, honestly, it has better adhesion than the Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum is probably half the price, maybe a quarter of the price, but you get about a quarter of the performance. So make sure if you're using primer, use a good primer and uh, it'll make your project last a lot longer. areas that we're sanded down past the paint. We are gonna go ahead and wet sand everything with 600 grit sandpaper and just kind of feather everything out because the edges of the spray paint, as you can kind of see, um, they're a little bit rough. So we just wanna feather, feather everything out and make it all smooth and get ready for paint. So I put about two to three coats on, uh, on each area, depending on what it was and, and how much it needed. Uh, to cover everything and make it all smooth but it looks pretty good and uh, I'm pretty happy with it so far so now we're gonna go ahead and wet sand everything with our 600 grit sandpaper make sure when you get to this step you rinse out that old bucket of water and get a new bucket that's fresh and clean and you don't have any dirt or other contaminants in there As you can see, prepping all three of these items is pretty much basically, well, it is exactly the same. So no matter if you're putting regular Dupacolor paint on that with the 2K clear coat you can buy in a spray aerosol can, or if you're doing uh, a job with a paint gun on these other parts, you're gonna prep it the same exact way. You want to take your time with this, and the more time you take, the more patience you have, and you know, the more work you put into it, all the details and everything, everything's so perfectly smooth, the better the paint is gonna lay on it and stick on it. So it's gonna last a long time, it's gonna look really good. It is getting late tonight, so I'm gonna call it a night, and I will see you guys bright and early in the morning. It is bright and early the next day, and we're back in the garage. We're gonna get started with painting here. Before we paint, we are gonna go ahead and wax and grease remove everything one more time then we'll tack clock and uh, we'll start painting actually with the bumper over here because we're going to do the dupa color spray paint the conventional spray paint it does throw um a lot less i guess overspray you would say just the way it's designed and it doesn't have the air pressure that the spray gun has so we're going to do that first so we can get better um footage and videotape of it and then we'll shoot the base coat on the grill and the front bumper with the spray gun so, yeah, we'll get started with that. I'll show you how that works. I've got one can. I think that should be enough to cover what we need on the bumper. If not, we'll get more. 
Also, we have our 3M respirator here with organic filters, so we're not inhaling all the fumes from both this spray paint and that gun. Um, if you are spraying this stuff indoors, you definitely want to make sure you have a mask, even outdoors. Um, it's bad stuff, and then when you get into the 2K clear coat, um, it gets even worse. So you don't want to be inhaling that. Make sure you have the proper respirator. Right now we're at the point where we do want to have gloves on for the remainder of the project. We just want to make sure we keep any grease and oils from our hands from getting on the bumpers or you know where the paint is trying to stick. So that's going to cause fish eyes and swirls and all that. But now we're going to wax and grease remove to make sure the paint sticks good and get everything, any extra contaminants, whatever's on there off. And uh, then we'll use this tack cloth here to make sure we get any dust off before we apply the first coat of paint. So we'll get to it right now. So now that everything is wiped down with wax and grease remover and a tack cloth, we're gonna go ahead and put on our first coat of paint. Um, for this bumper, we're gonna do probably four to five light coats of paint or until we get coverage. Um, with metallic paint, it's always better to do lighter coats, especially for your final coat, so the metallic lays out. Um, if you put it on heavier, you can get zebra stripes or uh, you know the metallics just aren't gonna sit right. So yeah, we'll start out with our first light coat and we'll wait about 10 minutes in between coats until we get full coverage. I'm not gonna to be too concerned with the top of the bumper or uh, underneath here because there is that plastic pad that goes over the top and I'm kind of limited on paint with this, uh, this one can. So we're gonna see if we can make it work. So there's the first coat and as you can see it actually covered pretty well. So um, I think it'll probably take about two to three coats and really not, not be too bad. So I think this can of paint is definitely going to cover it. So there is the finished product with the Duplicolor spray paint. And as you can see, it came out pretty dang good. Really happy with it. Um, if you get like any kind of dust or anything in the paint job as you're, um, as you're painting, you can just go ahead and swipe it away or you know use a lint rag, make sure the paint is dry. But before you put on another coat, you wanna make sure you take care of all your imperfections. You know, if you've got any kind of fish eye or anything, if you put more paint on it, the only thing it's going to do is make it worse. So you definitely want to take care of uh, imperfections as you go. So that one came out great. Now we're going to go ahead and mix up our paint for our paint gun. Then we'll tack cloth these one last time and uh, we'll get rid of paint. Another thing I'm going to do that I didn't do for that one is I'm going to put water on the floor here. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep down any dust as I'm walking around in here. And as we're painting, because that spray gun uses a lot more... Um, air volume, it's gonna move a lot more dust around. So we definitely wanna get water down on the floor here. I don't have a, a fancy ventilation system in here as you can see. So uh, this is just a basic garage, and uh, but this is how we garage paint and we get good results with it. So my paint gun over here is a 3M AccuSpray. Um, I believe this is an older model, but there's a newer model out. I'll leave where you can find the new model in the description down below. And um, I think you can get on Amazon for, I, I believe it's right around 150 bucks or something like that. But uh, this system is very nice. It comes with all these different kinds of nozzles. This is a 1.3 nozzle here. And this is pretty much uh, a good universal nozzle. Um, I use it for base coat. I use it for clear coat. Um, every now and then I'll use a little bit heavier nozzle for clear coat. But this is a, it's a great all around nozzle and it works well for what I use it for. Everything in this system is really nice. We've got our cups over here with our um, our lid there. And the way you set it up is in that cup there. And then there's a locking ring that goes on that. But it's got all our measurements there. 
and uh, it just makes it really easy. Then when you're done with it, you just throw the cup away and, um, and move on with life. There's no cleaning that out with thinner and everything. Um, you clean off the tip here and then you clean off the nozzle and uh, well, if you want to reuse the nozzle, you could get new ones every time, I guess. But I reuse the nozzles. You can get about, I don't know, about five different shoots with them and, uh, and they work pretty good. So now we're gonna go ahead and mix up our Omni Base Coat PS2 with our Nason Medium Reducer. So we're gonna do this one to one in our paint cup here. As you'll see in the video, there's gonna be a lot more overspray with this gun and it's gonna put it on a lot finer and, and a lot finer mist. So it's gonna come out of the gun better and it's gonna give you better overall coverage. I mean, you can get good coverage with the rattle can, but this is just, uh, it's gonna give you good consistent coverage and the great thing about that gun is you can adjust the spray pattern, you can adjust uh, how heavy the coat's coming out, and it really gives you a lot to work with. Um, if it is your first time using a spray gun, I would recommend practicing, maybe on uh, some cheaper bumpers or older stuff or whatever. Just buy some cheap paint and practice with it before you go ahead painting on your Pride and Joy or your wife's brand new car. So for now, we're gonna get some more water on the floor. We're just gonna push it all around, make sure the floor is nice and damp so we're not stirring up any dust. Then we're going to mix up our paint, like I said, one to one, and uh, tack cloth our bumper and our grill one more time, and uh, then we'll get to painting. All right, so now we got our gun hooked up, paint mixed, um, everything tack cloth again, and uh, we got our water on our floor. We're gonna go ahead and um, put our first coat on the bumper and the grill here. We're basically gonna do the same exact thing we did with the rattle can, but just a different method. We're gonna do, uh, probably try to do two to three light coats, just like we did on the back bumper there. So here we go. So we got the third coat of base on everything and we let everything sit for about an hour a little bit more to flash off and uh, Everything came out absolutely amazing looks really good and uh, I think it's gonna turn out really nice So I tack cloth everything, you know after sitting in here with all the fumes and kind of everything just kind of settles on it So I want to make sure I got that all tack cloth off and got all that off there and to catch any other dust particles I just happened to land on our bumpers or grill there. So we got the 2K clear coat. I will leave the link for this down below in the description. Um, but you get this on Amazon. I think they're like 10 bucks a can or something. And then uh, we got our four to one, two part clear coat that we'll be painting the front bumper and the grill with. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up, get that ready for the gun. And then I will spray this. Um, I'm gonna spray this first and then I'll just do it coat for coat so you can see the difference in how everything lays out. Now, basically, I would say this is pretty much the same product as this. It is 2K, so when you mix it up, there's an activator down there, which mixes your four to one um, clear coat and activator just like this. So essentially, it's the same exact thing. It's just coming out of an aerosol can versus uh, this is gonna come out of the paint gun. And again, we're gonna get a little more control with this than um, using the aerosol can as we run out of propellant, you know, it kind of changes uh, how it goes on to what we're applying it on. But since it's just this little back bumper, I think it's going to come out just fine and we're not going to have any issues. And honestly, I think once we get these done and you put them side by side, you're really not going to be able to tell the difference that this one was painted with rattle can versus that one with a gun. I probably wouldn't use the, uh, the spray can for doing a large project. A hood would probably be pushing it, but I'm, I'm sure I guess you could probably do it, but that is just gonna be more consistent. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that up and uh, we'll get started. Now to activate this can of clear coat, all you do is you take that little red cap off there, go like this, put it on there, and uh, slam it down. 
And after it releases the activator, then you just go ahead and shake it for two minutes. And uh, I'll be really honest, there's very few differences between the rattle can and uh, using a spray gun. So everything came out really good. I'm gonna move this bumper over by that bumper and uh, we can compare direct side by side. So give me a second. So there you have it, both of them side by side, and I would say the color match is pretty close. Of course, that's gonna vary with who mixes the paint, how precise they are, and uh, how well you shake it, I guess. There's a few different factors in that. Most vehicles, if you paint like a body panel or something, you'll blend the colors. If you paint a door, you'd blend it onto the other door or hood, vice versa, something like that. But these are just bumpers in the grill, and uh, I think it's gonna match close enough. It's gonna be good enough for what I'm looking for. Um, you can see there is a subtle difference. I'm not sure if you can see in the camera, but you can kind of see there is a little more orange peel in this rear bumper here. This is what we use the rattle can on. And uh, you can kind of see that versus this. I think the clear coat went down a lot smoother and it just looks maybe just a little bit better. Um, I'm being really picky here, but you can kind of see like that right there. You can see that it's just perfectly glossy and it just went down like glass. So um, I don't think anybody else is never going to be able to tell the difference. I'm pretty certain of it. Um, I brought my wife in here and I showed her and she couldn't really tell the difference. One thing I do want to mention and I do think I got on video camera When I was putting the water down in here and kind of wetting the floor, I accidentally bumped that stanchion right there with a broom. And I'm pretty sure I got it on videotape, but the bumper fell off. It was right after I got the paint on it, and the bumper fell off the stand and kind of scuffed everything up. It was before we had the clear coat on it, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I kind of scuffed everything back up and um, just put a little more rattle can spray paint on top of it and kind of blended it all in. And it actually came out pretty good. You really can't tell. Um, there was a small little ding here that I ended up pounding out with my uh, body tools, but <laughs> you really can't tell. And it came out pretty good. So that was another little added challenge that we had. Um, I had this propped up because I was trying to get it as straight as possible when I was spraying it. And uh, that was probably where I went, where I went wrong. It was kind of unbalanced and it wasn't really that stable. So lesson learned, make sure your parts are secured on your uh, stand or wherever you're spraying before you uh, go dancing around them with a, a mop and a broom or whatever. So overall, I hope this showed you that you can have a paint job come out really good. You know, if you're painting small parts, bumpers, a grill, you know, you're trying to color match like I did here, um, you can make this happen without all the fancy equipment, air compressor, uh, air drying accessories, things like that. You know, you can do this out in your driveway and uh, as long as it's not like a dusty day and there's not a lot of bugs out, you can have a paint job that comes out pretty dang good. Or you can do it in your garage, you know, wet down the floor and uh, just make sure you mask everything off that you don't want to get full of, uh, full of overspray. But for now, I'll do one last walk around of everything, side by side comparison, and uh, we'll go ahead and throw everything on the truck real quick and then we'll walk around it outside and see how it looks in the sunlight.
the bumpers and the grill installed back on the truck and it looks absolutely awesome if it couldn't get any better well it just did so super happy with the way everything came out like i said and uh the color match i mean it's kind of hard to tell because you got you know different different shades and kind of different angles so the metallic makes it look a little different but i think it came out pretty good i think it's pretty close and uh, i'm very happy with it yeah i think overall that was definitely a success and i showed you guys the difference between painting with a spray can versus a professional uh, paint gun and as you can see that back bumper looks pretty awesome and you really can't tell that that was painted with rattle cans and durability should be about the same you got base coat with a 2k clear coat same exact as the front bumper just a little different method on applying it another thing i want to note is i did get this exact setup painted uh the front bumper the back bumper and the grill when i was in california before we got here and uh like i said had a professional painter paint them and it cost 800 dollars. so this whole deal right here cost me probably you know doing it in my garage like this I would say $15 in spray paint and uh, maybe $10 for the primer and I think uh, I bought a quart of PS2 silver and the clear coat. So I'd say I've got about $150 wrapped up in this entire thing. So most of that is labor and I think it was well worth it compared to paying $800 to have a paint shop do it. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope this helps some of you out that are thinking about painting your bumpers or touching up some paint or just trying to learn how to do painting in general. So if you did learn something and you did enjoy the video, please like, share, subscribe, throw a comment down below if you wanna see something else in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.